I think we, we, we both Daniela and, and the professor have touched upon it, but I think one of the first things we should we should do is is ask ourselves what the Mediterranean is. And I don't mean that in a patronizing or facetious way. I simply mean that for the most part, if I ask someone what's the Mediterranean, well, they will presume they will automatically think of Southern Europe, the Eurozone, right? So that's uh, basically Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, maybe Cyprus. And that's not wrong, that's only part of the story. And um, uh, and I think uh, the region itself is is even even that region is, is generally misunderstood. Um, the recent I was we were talking earlier with the professor. I mentioned to him that there was a an article in the Economist uh, about 15 days ago titled um, uh, "Spain and Italy are not the same," um, which we. <laughs> Which for someone like me and for Daniela, that's like seeing an article, you know, titled "The USA and Canada are not the same." <laughs> no, they're not. Um, to be fair, they were they were trying to make a point about um, economic outlook and whatnot. But the article began um, sort of tongue in cheek by listing some of the cliches that are applied to, to the two countries, and which apply, obviously, to the rest of us as well. You know, talk too loud, and just gesture with our hands when we talk, we eat uh, normally late in the evening, and uh, we consume um, you know, unimaginable quantities of olive oil. So, you know, there you go, the Mediterranean. Um, not really what the kind of image you would hope for for the cradle of civilization, but you know, it's the it's the, the brush we've been painted with, I think, uh, to a significant degree, and uh, and it's unfortunate. So um, so okay, so back to my original question: What is the Mediterranean? I would say the simplest and and therefore possibly the truest um, um, definition of the Mediterranean, I think, as the professor alluded to, is um, uh, from a regional and geographic perspective and a historical perspective. It's basically every country that borders. The sea that bears its name, and um, and so you have, um, as we said, you know the Euromed region, but you also have the East Med, the Levant, where you have uh, Israel and Lebanon, and you have Northern Africa, where you have Egypt and Morocco and Tunisia, and, and they all bring something to the table, and they are all Mediterranean, um, and um, it is it is it is not, as Daniela said, Daniela said a homogeneous region. And, and perhaps not even a harmonious one. Um, it is rather an ensemble, if you like, of, of distinct societies, but that nevertheless, I believe, and I think most Mediterranean people would agree, um, has an undercurrent of, uh, or a similar framework of what anthropologists would call uh, social um, nationalism, right? We have, we have these shared Values and, and manners and behaviors and uh, attitudes and, and, and it's subtle and it rolls over into the way we eat and the rituals we have and they may be different but there is uh, a common ground there. We understand each other, right? The way we interact with people, what's expected of us socially. Um, and comes to that point, there's there's a word um, and you know I was going to ask if there are any Greek speakers in the house, but uh, I think Daniel already settled uh, <laughs> that there's a word is philodimo um, and roughly translated it means uh, love of honor but that by no means uh, is it say it a little louder philodimo it's uh, spelled p h i l but say what the english says i will um, <laughs> philodimo you should, you should look it up there's a wonderful video about it but it, it essentially means directly translated, love of honor, or friend to honor, if you want to be literal. And uh, it's a composite word, but it, it in, it's a laconic word, which means that it, the meaning behind it is, is far greater than, than, than what it uh, appears to, to mean. It, it's, uh, it encompasses a deeply rooted um, mix of values um, and, and behaviors that are you know, social, uh, social norms. That you, this is and it dates back to antiquity. This concept, and it's something that you raise your your children to understand, and that you know teachers push and politicians use the word, and uh, it's it's um, sort of a mix of 
uh, humility plus generosity plus hospitality, um, the concept of reciprocity and selflessness, but also of pride and love of family and love of country. And it is this mix of, of, of many things which permeates um, the Mediterranean, whether it is the uh, Muslim or Christian or Jewish or European or Occidental, this is part of what it is to be Mediterranean, in my humble opinion. And, um, and there is this, this sense of common identity, even though we are, we are different and we've diverged and we've even, you know, there's been conflict in the region. And, and there's a sense of convivality. Uh, you were saying, you know, Danella asked any Italian, you know, when they run across a Greek, and the Greek says, ah, una faccia, una razza. You know, one face, one race, and we mean it. It's, they say it in a way to, to show that we have a shared history, we have a shared his, heritage, and that we are, you know, we speak different languages, we have, you know, differing uh, religious uh, rituals and practices, but we are nevertheless of the same, right? Um, and, um, and again, I'm not trying to sell you on, on that this is, you know, uh, a better, the, the region is a bed of roses, particularly the East Med. Um, the professor disagreed with me, but I think that there are many who would argue that the, the schisms and, and fissures that uh, have um, produced you know, economic and political divisions and conflict in the region, uh, some might say, sort of validates um, Samuel Huntington's uh, worldview in Clash of Civilizations. Um, I don't know how to get that reference, but <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Um, it, um, but I think the last few years, there has been a hopeful counter trend, which has gone relatively unnoticed until sort of the last 12 months. Um, and, and that is a, an unprecedented um, degree of bilateral and trilateral collaboration and cooperation, with, in particular in the East Med. Within the, the, the Euro Med, we're all part of the European Union, so we're, you know, we're already connected at the hip. Um, and, and this has been because of, and this has nothing to do with food, but, but I'll get there. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's been because of the discovery of oil and gas in the East Med. And that is, um, has, has sort of propelled this corporation into acting something like what coal and steel did for Europe after World War II. Again, perhaps a, a too obscure a reference, but um, um, the relationships that are, are, are coming out of this are have moved far beyond sort of where they started in oil and gas. In particular, there's a trilateral relationship, and I'm speaking at a conference that the, that the Economist is hosting next week, and it's on this collaboration, um, in particular between Cyprus, Greece, and Israel. But there are similar uh, agreements in place with Egypt, with Lebanon, with Jordan, which are no less significant. And, the, and what is special about these relationships that are coming into play is that they're secular, and they are modernist, and they are spanning um, you know, multiple areas from uh, agri-tech and water security and the environment and counter-terrorism and they are producing an environment of stability and growth and they are allowing um, us to rediscover our neighbors on a, and, and rediscover our own heritage and history as relates to food and as relates to agriculture. Um, the, the Israelis are pioneers in organic farming and what they did with the kibbutzes back in the, in the 1670s. And this, this um, borrowing and sharing of know-how is really um, reviving, I think, the, the, the various industries and, and, and what goes on. And, um, and I'll close very very quickly, and I'll go back to the economists. I'm not picking on them. It just so happens that because I'm speaking at their conference, I've been sort of you know taking a look at what they've been writing the last couple of months. And there was a their cover piece um, in February was um, was titled um, the uh, it was the steam is being let out of globalization. Yeah, something like that. Uh, basically, and they, they coined this phrase that it's turning into slobalization. Um, not very imaginative, but it's their term, not mine. And that this is leading to deeper regional interactions and relationships. And, and, I, and I happen to agree. And, um, and that trade and commerce is becoming interregional as opposed to you know, global. And so what you're seeing is the rise of a, 
a more multipolar world. And why is that important? Well, just as I said, because the Eastern Mediterranean is, is coming together in a very significant way, in a very important way, um, and because of where the Mediterranean is situated, it is at the crossroad of three continents, it is the bridge between North and South and East and West, the, the stability there and the collaboration there um, is going to be, I think, a very important factor um, geopolitically uh, going forward. And I've colored far outside the lines, I know, but... Um, what we want. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Annie. Thank you so much, Professor Friedman. It was uh, an amazing talk. Both of you, you were able to hear the commonality and really set the stage, I think, for our discussion.